I'm pleased to introduce everybody to the the team behind Foundry, and uh, and actually, you guys, let's go through and introduce yourselves, please. So I'm Robert. I uh, am the technical co-founder, I guess. Robert Nelson. Nelson. I'm Nils Hansen. I'm the creative co-founder. Mm -hmm. And I'm Kurt Schmidt. I'm the director of strategy. Fantastic. And um, and on any given day, you know, we see you coming in and out, hanging out at Copo. You're doing your, your you're working on your business. How would you describe the business? Like what's what's like the shortest pitch on what Foundry is or does? Elevator pitch. <laughs> Kurt, you've been kind of. <laughs> Uh, we're, up on this one. Well, we're, we're a product development company. Okay. Um, we help uh, with digital products. Um, I would say um, from, as we, like to, well, as we like to say, from whiteboard to launch. So you've got an idea for a product for your business, um, something that either enhances the customer <laughs> experience or makes it easier to do your business. Um, we can take your idea and flush it out. Um, help you um, adopt it within your enterprise organization or your small business, um, and then also help you launch it and then maintain it going forward. So whether it's an app for your iPhone or for something that needs to integrate with your larger CRM, CMS, um, many, um, whatever like legacy systems you have that you need to yeah. interact with. Right, yeah. yeah. And so businesses are growing fast these days, and. Um, we see a lot of people that are using spreadsheets and hobbling together different things to get their business done. Mm -hmm. um, so we come in and we kind of help tie those things together to produce a platform that also can enhance their business. Very good. I see Kurt is your golden throated pitch man. Do you see why I kind of <laughs> delegated right there? Um, it sounds like what you described was a range though, a continuum from like some of the consulting that might happen at the formative stages, mm -hmm. all the way to like designing the experience or the, or the, yep. the product and then really then developing it, like literally building it out. Yeah, I think that's what differentiates us a lot from um, other people out there doing it. Some people are very focused on the dev side, some people just on the design side, mm -hmm. and some people just on the consulting side. Um, we can offer the whole end-to-end -end engagement. Um, that's why our customers have worked with us for years and years, um, because they know that they can pull different triggers without having to go and get multiple vendors to provide that service. Um, so with us being able to come in and consult from a product development standpoint, a project management standpoint, all the way to best um, user experience, and then best practices in technical development to avoid tech debt, um, can really help uh, our customers. And yeah, I think it sets us apart um, from what others are doing. Yeah, yeah, I think the sweet spot is the end to end. Um, we, can, of mm -hmm. course, can jump in on any step of that yeah. that experience, but the, if we get involved early on, that's kind of where we really show our value. Yeah. Got it, got it. You said you used a word that, um, I, I know I've heard, but I'm not <laughs> sure what the exact definition is. You said tech debt? <laughs> yeah, technical debt. What is that? Robert can take that. Tech, that's all the stuff that you have to clean up as you go along, I guess. So like, like we take shortcuts. shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like in the heat of the moment when you're like trying to get something out the door, you always take a shortcut here and there, and then eventually someone has to go clean it up. It kind of catches up so, on you, doesn't it? Well, it yeah, and sometimes it's just things get out of date, and you have to do upgrades to libraries or something, and then you have to clean up, you know, that stuff. So. Yeah, but yeah. it can become it's expensive. It's super later expensive. On. Yeah. yeah. Um, to round up the picture of like what what so we talk about what you guys do mm -hmm. like how many of you are there now you've got a you've been hiring over the past few yeah, months yeah um, we have eight kind of core people and then um, some contractors as well okay um, and the the um, goal this year is to double in size so okay I think we were at six at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. so yeah we're kind of shooting for twelve more of a um, organizational goal rather than a financial goal got it yeah. There's just things you can do with certain like yeah. bench strength, right? Absolutely. Exactly. Um, and I've seen that every Friday you guys go out for lunch, and I've seen the size of the mob increase. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. So then whoever whips out the credit card for the food truck, it's probably you know that bill's getting. Yeah, we do a uh, credit card roulette. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> give, give the server all the cards. How come I always <laughs> lose? Yeah, right. Either you or me. It's weird. <laughs> um, all right. So so. The reason I wanted to establish like where you're at is because by contrast, there was a day when I 
think I, I don't know which of the two of you I remember meeting originally, but Robert, you were a solo guy. Yep. Work, and then you were just doing dev work, basically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. programming. And Nils, you were a solo guy, and you were doing like design work, UI design? Yep. Yeah, I was stuff? doing um, some branding and identity design, and then um, that quickly evolved into user interface and user experience design. That's where the demand was. Right. Um, so, I mean, that was the very start. I, I had never had employees mm -hmm. um, until Foundry. Um, I'm not sure, but you had partners. I had two partners in my own business. Okay. They never came down here, but yeah. But really, my partners were people like Robert, where I obviously I don't know how to code, so I needed people like Robert and copywriters to, you know, um, form on a website and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but never any actual partners in the design agency. Yeah. What was the moment where the two of you said, "Hey, if we combine forces, something else could happen"? What was like? What was the what was the the realization for you? What was the catalyst for that? Well, so I bought out my two partners, or they left the, our LLC. And there's like a little known like legal thing that LLC. I don't know. There's something about LLCs having to like re get a new EIN number or something. And so uh, we were at a bar, shocking, and uh, um, over a drink. And I was like, you know what? We work. We've worked on so many projects together, like so much stuff. Um, and I always hire him and he always hires me. Why don't we just like make it one company? Mm -hmm. And so we talked about that for actually quite a while, a couple of months and kind of came up with the, the dream that if we were going to do that, then we were actually going to build an agency, like actually get employees. And, uh, um, so if it was worth doing, after, it was worth doing on a larger scale. Yeah, exactly. So like being a total solo person or whatever is, is kind of a nice life, you know? Um, but being a solo two-person thing, I don't know. It didn't make a lot of sense. If we were gonna, if we were gonna go through the trouble of starting a company together, we might as well turn it into a something bigger than the two of us. Yeah. Well, and, and we did realize, like Kurt was talking about, that there was a demand for an end-to-end mm -hmm. -end agency. Um, you know, there are a ton of development agencies, there's a ton of design agencies. Um, there's not a lot that do that end-to-end -end solution. Um, and we really think it benefits the, the end product and the mm -hmm. client and us. Um, you know, we're, we're sitting in our office all day and, and it doesn't take long to get to a solution when, you know, my developer is right next to me. Yeah. Um, it, that, that overused term collaborative environment is really good for the end product and for everyone involved. Absolutely. Is, and so you, when you, like, then there was the moment where you made your first hire? What was that? What was that like? It was scary, honestly, for me. Yeah, you know, we didn't have we had we had money coming in, but that I mean that's a big commitment right there. Um, and then we had to we had to care for that person, right? Right. I mean, we don't want to hire someone and then f have to let them go a couple months later. So um, that was I thought it was kind of nerve wracking. I don't know about Robert, but um, I think you were a little bit more worried about it than I was. But it definitely we talked about it a really long time. Yeah. Because like Neil says, there's nothing worse than like not being able to support that person. Yeah. His, how has then having staffers who are, you know, they're dependent on like things being done well so that they can be productive, like how did that whole process of having staff all of a sudden, um, or increasingly, how did that change like just what your day-to-day -day looks like? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, for me, we have, uh, you know, all of us kind of do the user experience design part of it. I mean, we all kind of chip in on that. But the actual visual design, our first hire was Jason, who we actually hired as a junior developer from Prime Academy. Um, but quickly realized that he would, we thought he could become a great designer. So we asked him if, if you know, he'd be interested in that. And um, he was. And once that happened, I really was able to focus more on the business side because mm -hmm. I could hand stuff off to him. Um, he's worked out really great. Um, so for me, that's that part of it changed. I was, you know, I was doing all of the design myself, and then I, I really needed to be able to focus on the business side of it. So yeah, that makes um, sense. Robert, were you able to do that? Were you able to hand kind stuff of. or delegate some things increasingly? Or kind of. I mean, I probably I do a lot less than those does as far as business yeah. stuff is concerned, but. Uh, when we first started hiring developers, um, I was like the tech lead on everything, uh, and it quickly became obvious that I was like slowing everyone down. So, uh, luckily, we've hired like nothing but super senior, amazing developers. Mm -hmm. um, so they require very little help from me. Again, I probably get in the way more than any any anything. But 
Um, so yeah, I do. I still code as much as I can, um, but it's yeah. probably like forty percent of my day. Yeah, maybe. That's interesting because I mean, it's like you you've made this big transition, and for anybody who's a solo coder or solo designer, um, this is a this is already just you know like an order of magnitude difference from that life, you yes. know, and, and just what what the demands are. So I was just thinking, you guys have made this transition fairly well, it seems, unless you're just hiding like all the pan. You know, it's been, and... there's been some stress for sure. Um, yeah, you work long hours, you guys do. It's, right? it's stressful at times, but most of the time it's it's been a great experience. Yeah. Um, you know, we have to we have to make sure everyone's comfortable and, and having a good time, uh, both the client side and the employee side. So it's definitely more more work piled on in that respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we're a client. I mean, just you know. Um, so obviously, you know, endorsement, right? Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, like, what in general, like, what kind of clients have you found to be the ideal ones? Where you like you, you know, they're well, profitable. You guys don't go crazy. Yeah, well, like Coco, we like long-term clients. Um, we don't like swooping in, solving a problem, and then cutting right. ties. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we do like that that whiteboard to launch. <laughs> Uh, where we can start somewhere and then build a product out and then maintain that product. Um, I, th I think that's also better for both um, both parties. Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on that, Robert? Yeah, that's about right. I think, um, yeah, as far as clients are concerned, um, really anyone, I think, you know, it's kind of like dating almost. It's a personality thing. So yeah. um, it's always good to have clients that are similar. Um, just. But like, would you say is it like an enterprise versus like mm. smaller businesses? I mean, I would say we probably work in the small to medium more than we do in the enterprise. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't like areas of the enterprise that are like sort of more fun and innovative to work mm -hmm. with. Um, but we tend to work pretty quick, and the projects that we tend to work on are kind of like um, a little crazy sometimes, mm -hmm. and so uh, so we don't see a lot of like stuff from like really big companies okay very often. so you work agile with a maybe with a capital a maybe with a lowercase a but yeah, yeah. But you're you're nimble and you work quickly yeah but that like. said i mean we are um we have some opportunities coming up at larger organizations mm -hmm. um but exactly what robert said kind of like the innovations departments right yeah the yeah. smaller kind of one-off departments that don't have to go through a lot of uh corporate layers <laughs> to right to to get a project moving yeah um that stuff is definitely interesting to us very good, very good. So, um, one last question for you. Um, what, how has working out of Coco, so a, you know, a co-working space with lots of other kinds of people running around, yep. how has that affected the business in like a good or a challenging way? Uh, well, I, we wouldn't be foundry without without working in that space. I mean, well, as you met here, right? Yeah, okay. and honestly, I mean, my design business wouldn't have gone um, very well without it. I was working out of my house for a while, coffee shops, and I was, doing fine, but um, Coco accelerated that. Um, and then, you know, the foundry thing happened after that, so um, it wouldn't be a company without it. How does it work for the team, for, for people who didn't don't choose to come here, but? You know what, I, I can safely say everyone loves it. Mm -hmm. It's been great, I mean, they like the energy, they like being downtown, they like the space, um, they like the people around. Um, it's a great culture. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Yeah, for us, um, the, uh, the benefit has been, like Neil said, um, in today's world, it seems that we're, businesses are built more off of relationships than AdWords, right? So having that opportunity to interact with other business professionals um, that are not necessarily part of your company has been a huge boon for us, absolutely. That's great, that's great. Well, I mean, we've been really pleased, and I mean, I'm, I've been personally gratified to see you guys like blow up like this. Appreciate um, that. I mean, I see the sweating and the work that goes into it, so it's not like it just happened to you. you you've made it happen, but it's been really gratifying to witness that, and I just wish you guys, you know, best of luck in the coming year, in which you're going to double, mm -hmm. right? We're going to double, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.